All right, it's always good to get to know people in our club, uh, some of the talents that they have, some of the things that they bring. You know, a lot of times they use them only in their own shack, and it's good that, uh, that we can bring some of the members in and share uh, some of the uh, things with us. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be uh, uh, doing Tech 10 with Jim Jupin, uh, WA8 MPA. Uh, first licensed in 1964 as a novice, general, then advanced, uh, and then advanced to the extra. Uh, Jim's been a member of the club for seven years. Uh, he's been a past board member of the W6EK. Uh, he's on what, S, uh, SMPT, SBE, lifetime uh, IEE member, and uh, broadcast television background. And so uh, maybe uh, you can, when you're done, you can help out in the front row here. Anyway, let's give a warm welcome to Jim. Uh, the meeting tonight is on an MFJ product. Uh, if you're new to amateur radio, you may not be familiar with the company. They are probably one of the largest companies in the sense of what they make, the number of different items, and they're located in the middle part of the country. And some of us have been interested in software-defined radios. And three years ago, if you wanted to get into it, you could get a little dongle, and that dongle would allow you to operate an SDR, and then the software kept getting better and better and better. Normally your SDR simply feeds a computer, which is what I have set up over here during the break. It's the exact same setup. I, uh, I bought a device that would basically protect my little SDR radio from my transmit power. When I transmit, you get pushed to talk. That little device supposedly shorts out the input to the SDR receiver. If you're running 100 watts, you don't want any of that getting into your little SDR receiver. If you're running 1500 watts, you certainly don't want any of that getting into your receiver. But MFJ made two products, one about two years ago and then one last year. And there's a price difference, and I wanted to find out whether or not it was worth it. $20 difference of price doesn't do what it says it's going to do. So I set up a little bit of a, a jerry rig to actually illustrate this thing, and it's quicker works. Okay. Uh, it was $79 for the two-year-old unit. I called that old throughout this presentation. It was $99.50 for today's unit, if you were to buy it from MFJ. It's back order. If you actually wanted to get one, you'd probably have to wait a little while to get it. Apparently, it's a very, very popular uh, product. Uh, this was the sort of a cheap and dirty schematic layout of what I've done. I've got my little Yaesu FT950. That's my transmitter, my transceiver. I'm going into the F. MJ, MFJ unit that's under test. Uh, it's feeding into SDR Play 2. That's my little SDR receiver, which is sitting over on the table. And then the software for it is running on the Toshiba laptop. And then the antenna output, which is a loop through on the MFJ, is going to a dummy mode. So I don't interfere with anybody on the bands when I'm running these tests. Don't want to do that. This is what the software looks like on the uh, display that you can look at over here. It's kind of busy, but it's a wealth of information. One thing I'd like to point out is, in this box, the master box, if you start to blow the front end out of your SDR radio, you get a really nasty yellow warning here that you are doing a no-no. And that's one thing you want to keep an eye on. So we're going to concentrate on this box tonight. This is actually the waterfall display. And I think most of you have seen a waterfall display and you use it. I know Brian has mentioned that he leaves his on like on uh, 10 meters and if it lights up, he quits working and goes over and works with his rig. Uh, this is an indication of the old unit. I ran 50 watts. This is on 80 meters. You can see the frequency over here. And this is me transmitting 50 watts with this unit. And this is what we're going to look at up here. This is the amount of attenuation that I'm getting from the old unit under these conditions, going into the dummy load. So that's that's kind of like our standard, let's get started. That's the old unit. Here's the new unit. This is the one that costs $20 more. Cabling's the same, dummy load's the same, power load's the same, frequency's the same, everything is the same. But if you'll notice, this is not as good as it was on the older unit. But then again, we're down at the low end of our HF frequency range too, so it still meets spec. And that's the important thing. And this is kind of a random height here. You could set this gain anything you want. I just kept it on scale. But there's plenty of protection there for your rig. So if you're running 100 watts, you're not going to harm your SDR radio. 
with either of these two units. Uh, this is mid-band going to 17 meters. This is the old unit. This is again the setup. If you take a look at it, we're pretty much yeah, up against the top on where we want to be with that SDR radio. It's still safe. You're not getting the nasty notes that you're overloading, but you know, you're, you're going to be good with 100 watts. <coughs> this is the new unit. This is where it starts to shine a little bit. If you'll notice, everything being the same, we're getting more headroom here, and it's almost 17 dB of more headroom. That is significant. If you have a certain amount of power going into a receiver and you drop it by 17 dB, that's a huge drop and well worth the money in my mind because you don't want to blow out your SDR rig. Here it is, uh, 10 meters going up in frequency. We're over at 29 meg right now. And you'll notice that, once again, we're pretty much up against the top, running 50 watts. Still safe, but that's what the display looks like. And here's the new unit, the newer unit. 50 watts, 10 meters, everything else exactly the same. You notice again, we've got a little bit of uh, space here. It's almost 20 dB. Again, yeah, that's significant. The old unit was okay. The new unit is quite a bit better. So again, for $20 in my world, that's worth it. Now here's where this really comes into play. The unit is meant to handle 100 watts. So you can feed your transceiver through the box into your antenna. Your SDR radio is, is protected. You're good to go. If you're going to put a linear in the system, you take the output of the device and you loop it through the linear. You don't put this little MFJ box in after the linear. You don't want to do that. It'll, it'll fry it instantly. So if you're going to run a kilowatt or 1500 watts, you're going to want the headroom because you don't want to blow out your $250 SDR play unit because you're running 1500 watts when, in fact, you know, 100 watts was, was fine, but now maybe not so much. I took it one step further. I said, okay, let's go to six meters. This is the new unit at six meters, and it's just about as high as you really want to go. I'm running 50 watts there again. So this is an HF device. They'll market it as VHF, UHF, or low SWR, but as far as the isolation is concerned, even though they're using micro uh, strip technology, you probably don't want to be going and pushing it much more than that. So that's what that looks like. Um, let me back up one, two. On the unit, if you take a look today at what's going on over here, you're going to see this. This is at 18118. If you look at the local oscillator frequency, that's 18118. In this particular software with SDR Play, you're always going to have this here. It's an artifact of how the software was written. It's not a, a signal per se. And so basically you usually offset your, what you're looking at from the local oscillator just so you get out of that area. That's called a DC component that the author just doesn't want to spend time. This is free software, by the way. All of this is free. So it's what they want to do with it. And there are six meters. Here are the units. This is the old one. That's the technology they used. This is the new one. That's the technology they used. If you'll notice here, this is a piece of wire going here. This is the transceiver output to the antenna. They just hardwired it straight across. But then they have two jumpers in here to get into the board. Well, over here is your SDR radio output connector. And they had a single piece of wire like that jumping up to that. Well, I tried to replace that with a piece of coax with a good ground. I got a 2 dB improvement by just doing that. Again, trying to protect my SDR radio. That was well worth doing. <coughs> but the technology here, which is using strip technology, these are the connections to the UHF connectors. They're direct. The center pin on that goes directly into this board. And that's a whole lot better than having three little antennas inside the unit. So if you were going to buy one today, I'd say spend the extra money, get that one. And uh, if you pick one up used, fine. Again, if you're running low power, it's not going to be a problem anywhere. And with that, that's it. And you're welcome to